<laughs> including the tong shone, which I made for round steaks. Yeah. Right on, man. I'm shouting you out for that. Yeah, finally a good use for them. Yeah. Genius. Just genius. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing mail again. It's the middle of January. It's been fun watching these packages and envelopes come in. Can't hardly wait to open them, and here we are. But before I start into that, the first item of business is to recognize and thank you for responding to Nick Pelletier's situation. And Evelyn, and uh, Mom, I can't remember her name, but it was it was challenging to understand how to sort of extend that to you and we were anxious about whether or not we should. And now I just can't even remember why we were concerned about it because you responded en masse in a big way. And clearly the big problem for them is still the big problem. But the smaller problems that you could solve have been solved. And so that family can concentrate on helping that little girl get better instead of concentrating on how in the world are we gonna arrange our affairs so that we can do all this traveling. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done. All right, to the mail. So normally when we've been doing these mailroom videos, I, you just have to save the best for last, right? I mean, that's how you do these things, but not today. Look what David Floyd sent me. And you ask yourself, what is that? That's a drop-in sink. Live Edge, hand carved, made out of sweet gum. Wrap your head around that for a second. That will drop in to a bathroom vanity countertop. I'm thinking maybe copper. And you'll have some sort of a beautiful faucet discharging water into that sweet gum burl stump. Look at it. He did that with an angle grinder, a vicious circular cutting attachment on a chainsaw, a five inch orbital sander and determination. You know, I, it occurred to me when I was unwrapping it that maybe he sent me a new hard hat, but you know, maybe not. That's amazing. So the, the, here's a crazy thing. He's about my age, he's 56, I think. Spent 36 years as a plumber, mostly commercial plumbing, and that'll break you down. And now he's in a transition to less strenuous work around creativity, and he works with old metal and found objects and wood. He's from a sawmill and farming background, and he ground this out freehand and you can feel the the um, you can feel the slight deviations from the arc but they're slight I mean it's good it's smooth it's cleanable he's got three coats what do you say three coats of um, vinegar and rusted steel wool and coated with three coats of food safe countertop epoxy that's terrific thanks David yeah as I look at that thing trying to think of the right place to use it you know we're building a house I don't know, maybe yes, there are other places. I'm living in a house that might need something like that. So anyhow, it's just gorgeous is what that is. It's pure creativity, pure grit to make that happen. Way to go. This, the dazzling thing has happened again and that people have felt an inclination to help and a determination to do it in one particular way and they've acted on their good intentions like so many of you have through other, you know, Patreon and other ways. But these folks have sent me money, thank you very much, to Voca Alloy in California, Cordell Brumley in Bardstown, Kentucky, and Russ Cherry in Gainesville, Florida. Woodworker, don't know exactly on Cordell's thing, um, and Russell's home repair, thanks so much. It makes a big difference. The money makes a difference and the unmistakable reality of your interest in actually being a part of this is a morale booster that's even hard to describe. So thank you very much. And thank you to those of you who contribute through Patreon. You've made a huge difference now for like a year and a half or something like that. Transcript Bulletin, publishing. Curtis Dunn sent us a lovely stack of really neat stickers. And look, he, he kind of took it the other way where the negative space is the dark color, that's really neat. And, and then of course the sort of conventional understanding where the negative space is light and the, it's, it's awesome. Curtis, thank you very much. And uh, your beautiful stickers are gonna go up on the orange cabinet. And we are gradually figuring out a long-term solution to all of these marketing and, and uh, social media questions. So this is a big step in a wonderful direction, thank you. A Christmas card, James Fuller. 
Got to love a Christmas card from James and Tiffany. Thank you very much. It was a great Christmas. I hope yours was a great Christmas. It seems like that holiday just gets better and better, doesn't it? Mike and Allie Slocum, they're in uh, Colorado. And she, or they, I guess she's a soap maker. And she sent me a bar of soap. And she says it is to take the place of lava soap. And it looks like it could take the place of lava soap. It's called Gear Slayer Charcoal Soap. Looks like charcoal, smells like charcoal. I don't think it'll have any problem handling, handling some of the gunk that we get on our hands around here. It'll look really good perched on the side of a sink. We're not putting it on the side of that one. Okay, just saying, this is not going on that sink. But this is a manly soap indeed. She has an Etsy channel. We'll post the information, her online information and the how to get to her Etsy channel. And uh, <laughs> they operate and apparently live at the Lazy A-Hole Ranch. Can't beat that. Thanks, Mike and Allie. Alex Rod, he's a mechanical engineering student and he has included the sticker for the Mechanical Engineering School at the University of Alberta. And I'll tell you what, man, I, I have often thought that I should have found myself at some point in a mechanical engineering program. But here's the key. <laughs> I'm studying mechanical engineering and I have been recommending your channel to my classmates to help them understand what happens once a set of drawings arrives at a fabrication shop or a construction site and how they, as engineers, can make the lives of tradesmen and contractors easier and safer or I would add, more frustrating and harder to endure. I have heard, including a science teacher I had who was a chemical engineer, assert that before any engineer got their stamp, got their certification, they needed to spend a year in the field that they were designing for, working with the, with the uh, systems and the specifications that other engineers had designed for the ordinary people out in the field to implement before they would be fully qualified to even make those kinds of recommendations to plague or bless other people's lives. So, Alex, thank you for your insight. You're gonna make a fine engineer and the world needs more just like you. So I have here from my friend James in Missouri, this dazzling little collection of pictures of the shop things that he's been building. He determined he wanted to become a blacksmith and he wasn't gonna let anything stop him, including not having an anvil or a forge. So he built a forge. He made his first anvil out of a sledgehammer that he polished up and cast into a block of concrete upside down, coming out of an upside down flower pot. And when he outgrew, anyhow, this guy is so creative and so inventive. But we'll post these pictures somehow so you can get a look at them. James, you are so creative, you're fearless, and you have finally found a use for round concrete stakes. He's forged them into some tongs, okay? This is a man after me own heart. Way to go, James. Forge ahead, brother. So the last one is from Great Britain, UK, England. Why any country would need so many titles to cover such a small expanse of real estate is completely beyond me. But this is from a most interesting fellow, Andy Mack, and he has a handyman channel. I run a joinery business in Northeast England. I think that here we would call that a cabinet shop. But he, out of the goodness of his heart, sent me some treasures. The first is a metric tape. Now I'm not, uh, <laughs> Gotta love a metric tape, but here is the profound improvement. Rather than the increments or the system, it's left or right. The numbers are legible either from the left or the right on either the top or the bottom. And there's the stickers that are going up. So, oh, here's the big one. A completely new type of screw engagement mechanism from my experience. What's this called? Pause drive. It's a, it's a modified Phillips tip deeper with another set of indentations occurring between the 90 degree distance between the legs of the Phillips. And man, that's positive. And two or three cool screws. And even the, the little bitty screws are engaged by what I would refer to as a number two Phillips. And they stay on there. So thanks, Andy. I appreciate your ambition and your interest in bringing the message of handy, handicraft and productivity to the world. And I appreciate you sending me a new understanding of ways to hang on to screws, including a catalog of British screws and screw suppliers. Awesome. Thanks, guys. It's always a treat. See you next time.